Hi guys, uh, welcome to our, our little debrief at the end. Um, today we had a message called, can I get a witness? Or, or should I do it? Can I get a? <laughs> right, right, yeah. Uh, it was amazing, it was impactful. Um, I learned a lot, took a lot of notes. But um, initially I'll just get your first reaction. What did you guys, um, John, what did you get from today's message? Is it all right for you to use the mic? Thank you. Sure, it's, it's a great message today. Um, because it's a message that is just so amazing. The fact that we've been set free, the fact that we we have been given this glorious gift that Jesus came and he and he and he paid the price for all our sins, and that if we if we just receive that and we grow a relationship with Jesus, that we can we will witness that we'll witness that because people will see that light shining out of us. I think it says in the word, it says, um, so let your light shine that everyone will see your good works, glorify the Father in heaven. And I think that's such an important message and that's definitely something that came across today. Wow, nice. So what about you, Ada? Um, is there anything that stood out for you in particular? In particular, because I mean, everything that John said was like basically summarizing the thing. So I guess the one thing... Mm, can I can I get yeah. to <laughs> okay so this one of the things was when he was talking about the balance of of having the word of God but also walking in the power of the word of God oh, yeah, that true. that those yeah. two things have to work together uh, and otherwise you're preaching an incomplete gospel that's what you're doing you are like it's like anybody you find and it's funny because you can actually mix those two up with like with analogies of like for example some people use bread and water like if we only have bread like how how is that flowing down your pipe it's like you know there's that you know and there's also like you get oh, okay sorry but 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 there's a sense in which there's a constipation in your faith too sorry i know like i don't know why my mind went there but some analogies that's what hey it's okay <laughs> but you understand my point. It's like yeah, you yeah. know. It's like you. You're oh, okay. I can't say that. But it's yeah. like you're. You know. You're back. Clogged. You're clogged. Yeah. You're clogged. <laughs> you're clogged. You're stagnant. You're stagnant. stagnant. That's a better word. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so what? What walking in the power is actually? It's not really because sometimes I think we over over talk the the gift of the spirit and we're like we glorify them and we're like but what that is really is just an expression of the holy spirit that's what those things are you're you're walking the word that he's that he testifies to you know i, I actually wrote it down somewhere where when um rich was talking which is that the holy spirit's job is to testify of jesus so and who's jesus jesus is the word and so if you only have the word, you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to do what he does, which is testify of who? Of the word of Jesus. So, those, so that really stood out to me. It's like my Christian walk is not complete if all I'm doing is just regurgitating the word and not living it. You know. So that, and then the last thing, I think it's really like what, what John was saying, which is like how could I keep this gift that I've been given from other people? It's like, how can I sit on this thing that's literally changed my life? Like, and what I loved is, it's not like he's saying that the way you do it is any better or less than how someone else does it. The point is that don't do it, right? That's it, isn't it? Like when you read in the word and it says, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Just do it. Just do it. Like, what are we waiting for? When he says, go out there and preach the gospel. Just do it, or you know, there's so like, like there's so many things. So that got me, that yeah. And I love what you said as well, John. Uh, when uh, when you went up, uh, you can take the mic. Um, just kind of clarifying, is saying exactly what you're saying that it's not necessarily us. We we have a part to play. You you went out and you know and and you set up your 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 things, and then God was like, all right, because you've shown your faith, because you've done what I've asked you to do. Yes. I'm going to send the people and uh, that was incredible but yeah so I think it's really important as well that the Bible reflects this that Paul um, Saul in the Bible was a, a man of great Jewish um, intellectual understanding right 
He was a guy that was under um, stewardship of the high, uh, high guys, the big guys of the, of, the, of the religion, of the Jewish religion. So he was a very knowledgeable man, but God actually chose to use him and take him away from the Jewish people and used him for the Gentiles. So, so if you think about it, all of, all, of, all of that experience, all that knowledge that he used was absolutely useless because actually the gospel yeah. message the gospel message is it's just it's just love it's it's the fact that they actually and you just preach christ crucified and actually paul said in 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 acts he said um i i preach without wisdom because you know the the, the simplicity of the gospel profound is so profound that the the wisdom of man cannot comprehend it we we can try to to, to materialize it in our own flesh you know um, so it's just that, and the other thing is, is, is Peter, like Richard was saying today. You know, oh, yeah. Peter, um, he ran, he ran from 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 Jesus. He went back to his job, and even though he felt unqualified, he was qualified. He was nearby. Because, you know, he was the one nearby. He was nearby. Yeah. And and you know, as soon as that Holy Spirit has come into our hearts and has has given us a new story, we are a new creation, right? We're baptized, we're a new creation, that, that that gives us the qualification in the sheer fact that we can then share that love of Jesus to those that are so lost and so broken. Bro, don't you love the word of God? Like, <laughs> it's just, it's amazing. I had a question for you guys. Because um, even with, after the, the, the Peter bit, he talked about, um, do people see, you know, do people see you? They, they see God in you. They see Jesus in you. Uh, but then he also talked about what have you seen that you've never let go of? So I want to ask you guys, what have you seen in your walk with God with the people that maybe you looked up to or to even people in the Bible, that things that Jesus has done, what have you seen that you've always, that has never left you? That when you go out the house, you're like, no, I am going to honor that word that God did or honor what I saw that leader do that made me want to keep doing it yeah. if there's anything that comes to your mind um yo that was the thing that was the, i'd forgotten about that yeah. he said you need to see what is possible so that you can be a witness of the same thing Bruh. you get me that's 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 it and that's why it's so important to read the word so for me oh gosh there's so many things bro <laughs> but i think okay so i think what somehow I think maybe it's to do with maybe what God has put in me I don't know but when I see the insistence of that Paul has of the truth that let's not deviate like uh, to me to me I'm like because he he understood that even if you if you misunderstand the gospel even a little bit you've you've missed Christ it's like yeah, yeah. that's it's it's like what you were saying like Christ crucified that is it that that's all I have to give you I don't have anything else and so for me that is one thing that I've I've seen I've seen you like people in my lifetime who are so strict about like I'll give you an example is Liz the one I the the lady at work that I mean, I bumped into her uh, when hi, I was Liz, working. If you're watching yeah, this. hi. <laughs> <laughs> I bu- I, she started like a Bible study in Aviva. Yeah, yeah. This is like this massive building of finance people who are well learned, who don't really feel like they need God or anything like that. Then she starts a Bible study right in the middle of it, and and it grew like insane. But she was, I remember that she was so insistent on the word being the word on Jesus being the center and like let's not deviate this is w- this is the gift we've been given and it's the word that what is it the power of God unto salvation right yeah. like if if it's less than that then it stops being able to save yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it starts it starts being like a history book yeah. <laughs> and then what can we do with a history book <laughs> like, yeah. so yeah that would be my answer I think oh, I, love I, I love what Rich said as well mm. uh, we get it we got it but there's one extra one and it's we give it right oh. because like because like <laughs> basically right the the greatest thing for me that i've that i'm gonna say that i've witnessed while i've been out just witnessing to people yeah. is the love of christ in them right so 
for me, when I became saved, the, the good Lord showed me in that moment that I got saved how broken I was, right? That I didn't know what brokenness was until I came to Jesus, right? And that, that when you think about it, that God so loved this world that he gave his only son that through him we would have eternal life. So when I've been on the street and there may be somebody who's, a, who's in a place of wanting to um, end their lives, right? I've seen them the Holy Spirit move upon them and I've seen them break under the Holy Spirit that they actually for once in their lives they felt what life truly is because Jesus says I am the way truth and life right so as soon as that Holy Spirit hits their heart they understand that actually there is a life there is, there is a there is a true life and not the life that I've been living you know and this is it you know because we live in a fallen world where where I, I mean, nowadays, you know, we, we're living in, in a place where good has become evil and evil yeah, has been, yeah. become good or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But actually, when, when the love of Jesus just comes into your heart, you, you feel that transformation. So you see people break in, you see people open up, open up their, their hearts to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then in that moment, that's, that's where, um, if there's any kind of form of payment for me, it is the fact that, that, that they, they've come to that salvation. That that and I've watched that happen, you know, and that's and my my satisfaction is coming from seeing the love of Jesus in yeah. others. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just just putting out there. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, it was a great message, and um, uh, I leave you on this note. How <laughs> has what you've gone through helped someone else? So this is just. I mean, you guys don't necessarily have to have the stories right now, or but just talk on that, like. Uh, for for people who are watching, um, one just just get that point because I think he, he really expressed that rich really well. Um, has what you've gone through helped someone else, or has it been something we just moan about uh, that we say, "Oh, I went through this, I went through that, I went." Through. You would not believe what they did or this that. How has what you've gone through helped someone else? Because I see it across this whole room. There are people who have gone through uh, cancer, who've gone through. Things, things they can't control, uh, abandonment, you know, rejection of family. Uh, I mean, I, I can, you name it, it's out there. Um, but what I'm excited about is this. It's going to help someone else. It already started to, but I think God has got so much more coming. Um, but is there anything you guys want to add to that in terms of just how do we do that better? Talk about it. <laughs> right like yeah, just right. just just talk about it all the time yeah. every chance you get like look what jesus did talk all right. the time there's <laughs> like you n you can never talk about what he did enough yeah. never it's funny this this week alone actually i experienced that where like i am going through some of the toughest things in my entire life yeah. that i'm having to to process and i it felt it felt like god wasn't giving me an answer he wasn't responding and then I bump into somebody yesterday who absolutely needed every single bit of what I was going through wow. because they were going through the same thing. And then I realized that as I, was, as I was telling them what I understood of God's word, it was speaking right back at me. It was <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, I'm tell it's like, you know how it is when someone... It's going through something. As a Christian, I don't know. I feel like we've all experienced this, where yeah. someone comes to you with an issue, yeah. and the Holy Spirit just brings out the word out of you, yeah. and it's like flowing out. And you're looking at yourself like, where is this? Where is this coming from? That's what was happening. But then I realized that's exactly what I needed to hear because I was in it. And so yeah. I think, you know. And then somebody made a comment saying, how how funny would it be that you actually went through this for this moment right here. Like all of it wasn't actually about you going through that pain, but it was for you to be able to have something to say to someone else right. because you were right in the middle of it. Right. And so, yeah, I, I think our biggest lesson as Christians, we find out really quickly in our walk that it's not about us. So I think I just want to encourage you. The pain you're feeling is actually not really about you. In the same way that Jesus' pain when he was on the cross, it wasn't about him, it was about us. And so we're like picking up our cross right after him. We're just following in his footsteps. So that's why he says, you know, like, 
you know, rejoice in your suffering. Because when you join in the sufferings of Christ, you will also join in the glory. That's, that's what this is. It's, so the pain isn't really, it's not like my life is, like, it's not about me at all. It's got nothing to do with yeah. you or me. It's about the people that he's placing in our lives to be a witness. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Amen, amen. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Let me let me just share this though, you know. Let me just give you some encouragement, right? Mm -hmm. The very God that created a billion planets, the very God that created the sun and the moon, the very God that created the birds, the bees, the trees, mm -hmm. he chose to create you in his image, right? And this is the awesome thing, right? It's finding out that in life, while we strive to become the person that we believe that we are, yeah. we never truly see who we are until we come to Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to really encourage you because in my life, where I've come into a place of real strength has only ever been through the unity of church, right? Because, yeah, I'm with, I'm with Jesus and the Holy Spirit's leading me, right? But in that moment, I still need fellowship. I need, I need my brothers and sisters to pray for me at church, and I need things to be broken off of me, right? So one of the things that I just want to mention about our church, and it's a quick plug for Hillfields, um, Hillfields there, right? <laughs> Is the, is the fact that we, we come together and we're all broken, right? And none of us look at ourselves as anything more than just vessels for the Lord to use. And I've, I've, had, I've had many experiences in my life. I think some of the most awesome experiences have been in, in actually um, the fellowship in unity. And that's where God's true power is. Because actually it says in his word in Psalm 133, I think it is, that, um, how great it is for brethren to come in perfect unity and it's like the oil that comes down the beard of Aaron so I just want to encourage you if you're watching right now and if you've not found a church um, to just look for that church look for the church where um, it's a church where we're a Bible believing church and they believe in the whole Bible right the whole Bible and look for a church as well that, that, that are, are broken where you know you can come in and and you and you can be yourself you can express yourself freely with your brothers and sisters but but everyone comes together in love because the whole premise of of this faith that we're walking in is that it's not about us and it's not about a church building it's not about procedures or man's wisdom it's about jesus and i think that was perfectly portrayed in today's message that the whole thing was speaking about the fact that it's all about jesus and I just, one last thing to leave it on, but in the book of Acts, you know, the true, the true church was a church where they moved together, they sold all that they had, and they came together in unity. And, and they reached people that were lost on the streets that really needed love and hope. But they went, you know, they got baptized and they went, and they, and they went straight into the ministry. So don't be, don't be afraid of making mistakes because we learn from mistakes but just make sure that the only thing that you need to share is the love of Jesus that can set people free and not concentrate on what people and don't judge people, never judge people and don't ever, don't ever look at it in a worldly sense. Just allow the love of Jesus to come through you. That's that. yeah. Thank you, John. Um, wow. That was amazing. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you don't know who Jesus is, um, stick around. Uh, there's a little video at the end of this uh, that you can watch, but also, if you do know Jesus, go and be a witness. Can I get a? <laughs> so today, if you want to receive him, we've done a simple prayer. The prayer is not magical. The prayer is not special. It's just literally on a laminating card. What is important is that if you do pray and you do say these words, that you mean them when you say them. And if that is the case, it says the Holy Spirit, God himself will come and reside in you, come and live in you. And I promise you, if that's the case, you will never be the same again. It's the greatest decision you could ever make. So I'm gonna just pray this prayer, and I just, if this is you, and you wanna follow Jesus for the rest of your days, will you pray this prayer with me? Father God, please forgive me for ignoring you and doing things my way. I choose today to turn from my old way of living and now want to live a life following your Bible. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross and defeating death, that I could have eternal life. I call on your name and ask, please come into my life, that I would be saved. 
Holy Spirit, I ask, will you come and fill me that I would never be the same again? Amen. If you just prayed that prayer and you meant it, God has moved into your life. And what's even more amazing is that you are now a brother or a sister in the kingdom of God. What I want to encourage you to do next is to tell someone about it. Make this decision public. Go tell someone that you have received Jesus in your life. It makes a massive difference. Find a church that you can go to. God says it's not good that we should be alone. Find a place to, to be with other brothers and sisters that they would encourage you in your walk. If you're local to our church or you can get to our church, we would love to have you here. And finally, get baptized. Find someone or somewhere where you can be baptized. What you've just done is the most incredible decision you can ever, ever make. And it's been a real privilege to lead you into the kingdom of God. God bless.